Hi, this is Jim Jandesi. Welcome to the third in a series of tutorials that is intended to make you an ace that's intended to make you into an Excel hero in your workplace. You recall from the end of video two, we wound up with this spreadsheet. There's one thing that I forgot to do here, and you'll see exactly what it is as soon as I flash back to the finished spreadsheet. This is what the finished spreadsheet is intended to look like. This little label here, shares, I forgot to make blue in the spreadsheet that we're working on. I'm going to do that right now by clicking on it. And by selecting the color blue that I used for these other labels. So this part of the spreadsheet now matches what I'm trying to come up with. But we have bigger fish to fry at this point. The thing that we want to do now is to get the rest of these formulas in place to set these columns up. And as a part of doing that, in this very short video, I want to show you something that will make it possible for us to see the formulas that I've already put into this final spreadsheet. The technique that I'm going to show you is very handy for you to use when you want to check out the formulas in a spreadsheet and be able to see them. What I'm going to do right now is simply to hold the control key down and to press the key that's got the tilde on it. Now tilde is a curly little thing, looks like a little snake, and it's above the far left key on most keyboards, just under the escape key. You'll see what it looks like in a second when I put a slide up, but I'm going to toggle this to get into the formula view. I'm going to hold control down and press the tilde. And you've just seen everything change dramatically. The columns have gotten much wider. They've gotten much wider because now they're displaying formulas. The shares column shows the formula that we put in place to compute the shares from the share price and the market capitalization. That we did in an earlier video. But here we have formulas that looks like a lot of stuff going on here. But in fact, I'm going to focus your attention simply on this fourth row. Because once we have the fourth row in place, we can copy that to all the other rows. And as you see here, Excel will adjust the row numbers so that they all are suitable for the row in which we've copied them into. So in the next video, I'm going to explain what these formulas actually mean. But at this point, I simply wanted to expose you to this feature. If I press control and the t if I press control and the tilde key now, it goes back to showing me the information I had seen before, which is the result of those formulas being calculated. Now let me show you what I did to develop a slide that I'm going to refer you to for reference purposes. I did the control and tilde, but then I selected everything and once again with the format and auto fit, I let that shrink the columns down to the size they need to be. And now if I had left, the whole spreadsheet still fits on the screen for me, which was my intention in designing this for instructional purposes, but you get to see the contents of the cells. So this would be very handy for you to record as a reference point for the work that you're going to do in setting up the spreadsheet. What I'm going to show you right now is a slide that focuses you just on row number four plus these labels, which will be all the information you need in order to complete your work on the spreadsheet along with the video that I'll show you as number four where I do the very same thing. What we're looking at now is just the top of the spreadsheet in its finished form, but I've used the control and tilde keys to toggle the spreadsheet into displaying formulas in any of the cells where I've placed formulas. So you see here, to take a look first of all at the shares column, this is the computation that we had worked out earlier. Dividing the market capitalization by the price per share gives us C4 divided by B4. This cell will contain the result of that division. 
but toggled in this way with control and tilde, it's showing us the formula. Price now is a fixed value. That's just a column we'll be adding, and we put values in there. We're going to pretend this price had declined to this, and the resulting columns are going to show the effect of that decline in price. To compute the market capitalization now, we need to take the price now times the number of shares. So taking D4, the number of shares, as computed by this, times this fixed value, that's the formula we have here, and the asterisk is the multiplication sign. Now the change is a little bit trickier. What we really want to do here is to figure out how much value has been lost. That's going to be the price earlier minus the price now. That would come up to be a positive value. But we don't want to show it as a positive value because the change is negative. So we multiply it by minus 1. This will give us a negative 37 more or less in the case of the values that you see in this row. Now the last column, the percentage change here on this row, this value here, as we've computed it as the amount of difference between the old price and the new, stated as a negative number, if in fact the new price is lower than the old, divided by the original price. This is going to be the percentage that the value has declined. So in this case, it'll be a number about minus $37 divided by 45. It's going to be a negative percentage, quite a significant decline. Think about these formulas first in this row number four, because what you're going to do is enter on the spreadsheet that we're developing. You'll be inserting these formulas in those cells. Then we're going to go ahead and insert two rows above here. We'll put these literal values, total and average, enter these values here. This is fairly understandable. The sum of column C, row 4, through column C, row 32. And I'll show you an easy way to enter that. The same thing happens here now to add up all these market capitalizations. What we're looking for in this row is how much are these top 30 companies in Chicago worth? That is, their total market capitalization. We're just trying to add up all those numbers. And that's what the sum is going to do for us. So here we're adding up those market capitalizations as they existed on March the 5th based on these stock prices. Here we're going to add them up based on whatever price now we put in. And then we're going to do a similar computation here between these two. Here we're going to compute the actual dollar difference. And in a very similar way, we'll turn it to a negative number if it's a loss and the percentage of decline or increase will be shown here. Then we want to take the average, and you see how easy this is to do. It's just another function over this range of cells, and it will compute for us the average of all of those. We'll take the average of the market capitalization now, and then we'll compare these two to see if they've increased or decreased in dollar amounts and in percentages. Although these formulas might look a little bit complicated, just think them through. They're fairly simple, and whether or not you actually fully understand them, that's not the point here. The point here is we're just using this as an example so that you can get some practice in seeing how the entry of these kinds of things works, and then you see the result once we come up with the finished spreadsheet. This control here, control key held down, and this tilde, which is the key directly under the escape on the left side of the keyboard. Now, if you need a little help with this, there is a very handy place to go. There's a dummies book out there, and the publisher has very generously put some information from the book on the web at this location. This would be a rather long URL for you to key in, so I've created an alias that goes to the very same place, and it's a little bit easier to key in. It's just the bit.ly bit.ly xl-formula-view. And if you type that in, you'll go to this location to find this information from the dummies book that covers these things about Excel. At this point, what you want to do is at least write down the information that you see here concerning the formula for market capitalization, the change column, and the percentage change, and also for these top two lines, which don't exist in the spreadsheet yet, 
and we'll be adding them in later, but these formulas, including the cell ranges. We'll be discussing those next in video four as I go through the process of entering them. It would be very handy for you to have them recorded on a separate sheet of paper so that you can refer to that instead of having to flip back to the screen.